Okay, guys, I'm going to walk you through the demo for um, the rest of the lab. Um, we are starting on page five, cohesion of water. And it says put eight milliliters of water into a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. So I have my 10 ml cylinder. I'm going to add eight mls of water. Okay, so I'm at eight mls. I can't probably see that, but it's there, eight mls. And it says, what will happen if I add cooking oil and you have A through E to choose from? A, the oil will float on top of the water. B, the oil will sink to the bottom of the water. Uh, C, the oil will dissolve in water. Or D, the oil would become mixed up with the water or E, other. So go ahead and make your choice right now. So now it says oil is hydrophobic or water hating. It's caused, it's, see, I still can't talk today. It is called this because its chemical structure does not allow the formation of hydrogen bonds. Therefore, oil does not dissolve in water. When mixed, the two substances form separate layers and because oil is less dense, it sits on top of the water. So we're gonna test this. I'm gonna add two mLs of cooking oil. So I'm actually gonna put it into this graduated cylinder first. So I make sure I have exactly two mLs. I'm making a mess. Oh, I need to take some out, add it a little too much. It's not cooperating very well. Just a second to pour a little bit of this back out. And now I don't have enough. Gotta love science. All right. All right, now my bubble. My meniscus bubble is right at the line. So we're gonna gently add two milliliters of cooking oil by tilting the cylinder of water slightly and letting the oil runs slowly down the inside of the cylinder. So here we go. Maybe. We want it to run down the side because we want to reduce the amount of stuff just falling into there. So now can you see that? Might help, hold on, let me. Uh... Let me see if putting a colored background might help a little bit. Okay, so you should see that that top two mLs right here looks slightly different from what's below it and that's because all the oil is sitting right here. Okay, so it says what happened? So for number three, you need to answer what just happened? We're gonna save this graduated cylinder with its contents and we're gonna get a clean 10 milliliter cylinder for the next experiment. And we're gonna put eight mLs of cooking oil in that graduated cylinder. So I grabbed a couple more cylinders. I still have this one, we're gonna set it aside. And now I'm gonna add eight mLs into this one. 
of the cooking oil. I'm at five and a half. Little bit more. We're almost there. That's below. All right. So we are at exactly eight mls. All right. So that's our oil. And it says that this time, what will happen when I add water? So again, you're gonna make a prediction of whether it's A, B, C, D, or E. A, the water will float on top of the oil. B, the water will sink to the bottom of the oil. D, the water will dissolve in the oil. D, the water will become mixed up with the oil, or E, other, where you'd have to write what you think is going to happen that's not already on that list. And then, so I want you to make that prediction now. You might have to pause the video. I'm going to gently add two milliliters of water by tilting the cylinder of oil slightly and letting the water run slowly down the inside of the cylinder. So I'm going to take my thing that I had water in, and I'm going to add two mLs. Added a little too much. That's, that seems to be how I do it today. Hmm. You know what, I think I'm going to use a different cylinder because that one has some of the oil residue in it. So let's just do this. Perfect. So this now has two mLs of water in it. And we're going to do exactly like before. I'm going to tilt this and I'm going to add the water. Do you see that? So what happened? Write your answer for number seven. What happened right there? Pretty cool, right? Which is less dense, the oil or the water? This characteristic behavior of water and oil are critical are of critical importance for living things, determining many properties of the cells. So now we're gonna go down to water, oil, and dye on the next page. Predict what will happen if you add a few drops of a water-soluble dye solution to each of our graduated cylinders containing water and oil. Will the dye mix with the water, the oil, or both? So right now for number one on that page, I want you to make your prediction. And while you're making your prediction, I'm going to grab some dye. Okay, so I grabbed some red dye because I'm wearing red and that way if I get it on myself, I won't be too mad. So now we're going to add a few drops to each cylinder. We're not going to use a glass stirring rod. I'm actually just going to use my little thing here, my dropper. And uh, we're going to penetrate the interface between each layer, giving the dye access to both the water and the oil and we're gonna see how the dye behaves in each cylinder. Stir the contents of each cylinder. Okay, so I'm gonna add like two or three drops. This one is the one that has our water. Look at that bubble has moved, guys. It's down here now, okay? So I'm gonna add the dye. This is our mostly oil one, our second one we did. Kind of like a lava lamp, isn't it, guys? 
So there's our, our red dye going in there. I'm gonna take this and I wanna mix and make sure that this gets in there. So what do you see happening here? What do you see happening? Now you understand how lava lamps kind of work. Okay, so this was the one with the eight milliliters of oil. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our one that's eight milliliters of water with only two milliliters of oil. Ready? So I put three drops in here, just like the other one. We've got one big clump of dye. So let's see what oh, happens now that I mix them. Do you notice what's happening toward the bottom? Okay, so we get a little closer so you can see up here at the top. We even still have a little, a couple little bubbles at the top of the dye. This is still your oil section, okay? So you can see up there, there's actually some dye trapped up there. So now you're gonna do number three, or excuse me, you're gonna answer number two. So for each of these, how did the dye act? Okay, now we're gonna do three. Stir the contents of each cylinder with a stirring rod and then let it sit. Will the contents remain mixed? So I'm gonna use this one again. Da -da 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 -da. This is why I did red, I just splashed it all over my desk. Okay, so we stirred that. It's Still mixed, but at the top, you're still getting that oil separation. Okay. Take my other one that I did this with. Da, 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 da. I can't even stir it because look at I made an air bubble. Okay. All my dye goes to the bottom where the water is. Okay. So that's number three. Number four, I want you to explain the actions of the dye using terms such as solution, hydrogen bonding, and polarity. If you don't know what hydrogen bonding or polarity is, go look them up and see how that relates to water because this is important and we're gonna talk about it tomorrow. All right, next part. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the last page called Sheen. And it says, take a clean beaker of water. Predict what will happen if you add one small drop of oil to, to the water using a medicine dropper. We're gonna improvise because uh, all the beakers are in another room and I don't feel like walking to get them. We're gonna use a Petri dish. It works just the same. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here. And I'm gonna put this on my desk and I'm gonna angle my desk so you can see my camera. Oops, right there. Okay, so you should be able to see the thing of water. Actually, I'm gonna put this paper underneath. I think it'll make it a little easier for you to see what's happening here. So here's my water. So you should have made your prediction already. So I'm gonna take a dropper and it says to add one small drop of oil. Oh, can you see it, guys? I don't know if you can, and it's going to be a bummer if you can't. You should see right in here, there's actually 
kind of a great big sphere and in the center there's a little tiny sphere and you should see that it's kind of shiny. I don't know if you can see it, but right in here and then there's a little dot right there. Okay, so what would happen if I add a drop of detergent? Actually, I'm gonna add another drop here and see if you can see the sheen a little bit better. There we go. So you should see it's shiny, it's sitting on top. So now we're gonna add a drop of detergent. For number three, you need to predict what you think will happen before I add this. So make sure you have that typed down before you watch what happens. Now I'm gonna add the detergent and we're gonna see what happens. You're gonna record your results for number four. Woo, did you see? All of that oil spread out to the side and that detergent kind of took over. So you're gonna explain your results in terms of amphipathic molecules and cohesion. And I recommend you go look up that word because that's a word you've never seen before. It's a word you've probably never even heard before and find out what that means. I don't want you to copy and paste it. I want you to look it up. I want you to find out what that means. I want you to think about what you just saw in this dish. And then I want you to create your own definition in regards to what that means with cohesion. After that, you guys were done for today. Turn this in and make sure all your answers are in a different color.